Welcome back to my channel guys. Today I'm very excited to have my good friend. This is Andres Brizuela. Thank you. Man. And I've been trying to get him on for a while, but I finally pulled him out of work so he could be here. Amen. But um, <laughs> I've known Andres for a couple of years and I wanted to invite him on my channel just so he can share a little bit more of his story and some things that God's been putting on his heart. So, but before you get started, for the people that are watching that don't really know who you are, why don't you say a little bit about who are you, where are you from, what do you do? Sure. So, uh, as you mentioned, number one, I want to say thank you, Frank, for having me here. Uh, Frank is uh, definitely one of my best friends, one of the people that God brings into my life just at the right moment. Um, so, I'm sorry I took so long to be here. Oh, you're good. I'm um, happy. My name's Andres. I, uh, I'm from Venezuela. I was raised in Puerto Rico. Argentinian parents, Venezuelan parents. It's a whole yeah. mix. Um, I only say that because my friends always uh, joke with me that I'm very mixed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but nothing. I'm. I'm I got, you know, I started believing in Jesus about 10 years ago. Um, I don't believe in him because of the word, because of the church, because of uh, pastors or anything like that. Really just, uh, I started seeing so many miracles in my life that it led me to surrender to God. Um, something that I love to share with my friends always is that um, it's really impossible not to fall in love with God when, when he loves you, when you get to know him, honestly. The moment you say yes to knowing him, your life is going to change. So. Um, you know, 10 years ago, I was completely broken, going through a lot of stress, going through a lot of anxiety, anger. Yeah. Uh, I was in the University of Florida and I would try to focus in my classes. I couldn't. I would try to hang out with people. I just couldn't. I had this uh, just anger inside of me because of different problems in my life. Wow. Um, and just one encounter with God, just one time that I said yes to him, he just started changing my heart. He started changing my, mi my mindset, my my circumstances, my finances, my family, and my it's friends. It's so crazy that you say that because just me hearing you say stuff like that, I mean, this guy is always smiling for everything. And even <laughs> when he gets upset, it's really hard for him to like, to like blow, blow up. up. <laughs> He's super, so wow, that's crazy. You could tell God did something with you. Yeah, yeah. I, um, if you would have seen me about 10 years ago, you definitely, a lot of people say this, oh, you wouldn't recognize me. Um, you really wouldn't. Um, you know, I knew that I was in a breaking point when I would sit in a class. You know, when I was in high school, I did good grades. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was always the blessed, you know, the one that was blessed, confident, um, pretty popular, which doesn't mean it matter, but in high school it matters. Um, trying to say that, that my yeah. life was good. When I got to college, I, was, I noticed I was broken the moment I would be in a class. And I had so much anxiety in me that... Not only could I not focus, but I would always have to leave the class. I would always, yeah. uh, I would take my car on a drive, mm -hmm. drive to Naples and back just to wow. get rid of my anxiety, you know? So it was a moment where... So you would look for your cave? To yeah, stay. yeah, yeah. It was definitely a cave. It was, it was so much fear that I couldn't be with anybody. I had to be by myself. Yeah. Um, you know, to this moment, I still don't know if it was depression or not, because at that yeah. moment, I didn't know what depression was. But I definitely think it was such a... a uh, a moment of discouragement and fear and anxiety that I didn't know who I was. You know, my mm -hmm. family didn't recognize me. My 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 sister would cry just for me to stay home and and, and wow. kind of just spend time with them, and I just couldn't because there was so much uh, emptiness inside of me that I just it was almost driving me nuts. You know, and um, you know one day my and I don't know if we're all gonna say this in the clip, but mm -hmm. one day uh, my aunt tells me she goes to me, why don't you ask God for help? And I believed in God, and I didn't believe in God. I grew up Catholic. Um, mm -hmm. I love Catholics, you know, I just, I never encountered God, I never knew God as a Catholic. And I went out and I prayed and I'm like, look God, if you're real, um, answer these seven things for me. Okay. If you're not real, if, if you don't do this, I'm done yeah, with you. Yeah. Like, something tells me you might be real, so you have seven days to make this happen. Wow. And if you don't do it, I'm done with you. And that's why I tell people, like, I don't believe in God because of people. I believe in God because in a matter of seven days, he turned my world upside down. I was going to lose my house. We mm -hmm. somehow were able to pay it. Um, my uncles were going through divorce. All of a sudden, they got restored. I was in a relationship. It was completely broken. All of a sudden, it got fixed. Um, I was getting kicked out of the honors college I did. And, and all of a sudden, my grades went from, like, C's and F's to A's and B's. Wow. Um, I didn't have any money at all to pay for my school. And um, I got like $5,000 in my bank account out of nowhere. Um, and it's just like life came back yeah. into me. 
and and that's why I believe in God. And then the past ten years have been. It was something so obvious that you can't even argue if I couldn't it's God argue. or not. I couldn't argue. Wow. And I I would lie to you if I tell you that for the next months my life got perfect, mm -hmm. and I became this devoted believer of Jesus. Yeah. I'll lie to you completely. What I tried to do was, okay, you're real. I'm gonna keep my lifestyle. I'm gonna keep partying. I'm gonna keep drinking. I'm gonna keep hooking up. But I want you to be in my life, uh -huh. and that's an issue because. Yeah. The more I got to know him, the less I could keep my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I didn't stop sinning because of my own decision. Um, I really stopped sinning was because I fell in love with God, man. And, yeah. and, you know, the Bible says this. I didn't understand this back then, but the Bible says that um, loving God empowers you to, to obey him. And it's not out of control. It's out of surrender. You know, the, the more you fall in love with him, the more you surrender. And, and, and it's almost like the desires you had in your own yeah. heart start going away. So I tried really hard to keep messing around yeah. and know God, and it just didn't work. You, you're either one or the other. And um, the years after that, like the more I got to know him, um, I just went into this radical journey where my life was never the same, where I went through hell and back, but it's a lot different to go through hell by yourself than to go through yeah. hell with God with you. Um, you know, I've, I've gone through some low moments, some really high moments. I never imagined. He asked me who I am, basically, uh, you know, today I, uh, I I do marketing. I do marketing for King Jesus Ministry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the marketing uh, manager there. Um, awesome. I'm also an elder for the youth. Um, so I would have ne I do business as well on the side. I would have never imagined that from being completely broken and and wanting to. Yeah. My dream was to go to New York and make wow. money and go to Wall Street and yeah. have as many businesses as I could. Um, to now just giving my life for other people or try to at least, you know, yeah. uh, I never imagined that and, and that's it. We were talking earlier about being vulnerable and it was so crazy how we were talking about that, but you somewhat mentioned it in your story as well, how it got to a place where you had to be real with God in order for him to change you for all those things that you were doing that you didn't want to do. It's almost like you had to get to that point of vulnerability. So I don't know if you want to share with them a little bit more on that. <clears throat> You know, when when I first came to God, it's really easy to come to God. What's hard is to be real with Him. And, um, you know, I'll give you an example. Frank, I consider myself a really bad friend. Uh, I consider, I'm, I'm learning to be a friend. I'm, I love people. I can help people. But I just have such a struggle being a good friend to my friends because I'm, I'm so uh, focused in... Mm -hmm. Uh, trying to help the people that, that, that have been assigned to me, you know, yeah. that I forget about the people that I, I'm assigned to and that they're assigned to me, not, not, on, a, not in a level of, of like mentorship, but a level of friendship, which I think is the greatest mentorship in I'll my opinion. I'll say this, Andres has, he, people don't really know how much he has on his plate, but being a friend, I learned that you have to just be understanding to Definitely. other people <laughs> and that really helps the friendship because and sometimes I fall in that too. It's not just you. I'm Definitely. also the type of person that sometimes I'll be so focused on my stuff that months will go by and we don't talk. But the good thing is, is that thank God, at least when we're together, it's like not a day has, has gone passed. by. But it is important to understand like who are the people that God brought into your life for a reason. But but yeah, but, but you are a good friend. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't beat yourself up. And you know what's crazy that through Frank, I've realized that... Um, you know, your greatest influence to change people doesn't come through a pulpit. Um, it really comes through just the, the, the goodness that you pour into your friendships. And that's what Frank has done to me. Um, he tells me all the time things that have helped him in. But in my opinion, you know, it's funny because when I first met him, he didn't really like me. Um, and, and we just bumped heads. And, and just one day he's like, listen, we're going to be friends. Okay, because God that? told me something like that. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'll, I'll say this though, I'll say this. I do remember at the time, I also know that I was dealing with a lot. I was hurt by people. It was so much easier for me to see the bad in people than it was for me to see the good mm -hmm. or even believe that there was any good. But anyways, I just want to say, if there's someone in your life that you don't like, Pray about it because you never know if they might end up being a really good friend. I agree. So. And going back to vulnerability, you know, the thing is that with Frank, he became vulnerable with me in certain areas yeah. and it allowed me to be vulnerable with him. Um, recently, somebody came up to me and it, it's all going to connect to the story. I'm going to tell you in a moment. But recently, somebody came up to me and asked me, um, how do you help a friend that is not opening up? 
Okay. And um, there's two things you could do. You either like just are there faithfully with them until they finally their heart opens up, or something that has worked for me is that I and I actually learned this with you is. I'll become vulnerable so that person feels comfortable enough to speak up to me. And that's what happened with yeah. me when I came to God. And many of us, you know, many of you people watching, um, we blame so many things on God, but how many of us can really be honest with ourselves and say, you know what, I was vulnerable with God. I opened up about my, my issues, not just about my needs. Yeah. And it was, it's one thing to come to God for your needs and he wants you to go to him for that, but it's even more important for, to come to God for him to know you. And you might say, yeah, but God is the creator of everything. He knows everything. Yeah, you're right, but he still wants to know what you're going through right now because yeah. him knowing you is more beneficial for you than for him. It's when you open up to someone and allow them to know you that they have the authority to speak into yeah. your life. And unless someone has the authority to speak into you, you're not in a relationship. You're, yeah. just, you're just in an acquaintance. You're just in a, in a social game, yeah. pretending who's better or how funny you are. And you know, entertainment is awesome, but unless Frank doesn't have authority to speak into my life, my friendship with him will never grow, will never be anything. Yeah. And, and I think that's what changed me with God, that I went from just wanting him to bless me to then I started opening up to him about my issues and then my yeah. life changed. And I think one of the greatest <clears throat> lies that the devil will sometimes do is put in people's minds that you know who do you think you are mm. and make them feel guilty or ashamed for just being human and then they feel like they can't open up to god because they think who are who am i i'm unworthy but at the end of the day we're all sons and daughters and we're hiding things from god that he already knows yeah, yeah. <clears throat> because he's god and and it's so true like no matter what just to be open like you're saying yeah definitely and and what i was telling frank earlier on is that you know this year god has put it in my heart that it's a year of victory um it's a year of promises being fulfilled it's a year where um how many of us we've heard so many prophecies you know just things that god spoke to us or or maybe one of our friends came up to us and told us listen i feel from god that this is what god wants to do in your life but we haven't seen them come to pass you know and um and I believe with all my heart that this is a year where we'll see them come to pass. And, and I'm seeing them. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, my sister, I have a sister. Mm -hmm. uh, her name is Karina. And um, for years, uh, God told me of her salvation. You know, and, and she just, you know, she believed in many things, but not in Jesus, you know. Yeah. And um, I saw her completely broken. I saw her going through through a lot of attacks, of lies, of fear, panic attacks. I'm talking about she went through one of the toughest seasons of her life where... where um, kind of like how I did 10 years ago, um, she will go on vacations and have such a panic attack that she will start throwing up in the bathroom because mm. she forgot who she was and, and she was just consumed with a lot of what ifs. I think fear is just putting your faith in things that haven't happened, you know, and what ifs, but in the wrong areas, not in good things, but bad things. So to me, it broke me because my sister comes to Miami and she lives in Atlanta and one day she's opening up to me and I'm like, look, you've tried everything. Why don't you try what worked for me? Yeah. And for the first time, I actually share with her my testimony of what I went through. And next thing I know, she's in the deliverance retreat at her church. Um, the deliverance retreat is just a place where we, we basically, you know, Jesus was all about freedom, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, he has uh, the power to make you free from everything that's attacking your mind, your body, and your spirit. So she comes. In that retreat, she gives her life to Jesus. She's completely free. I see her a month later. And she's like, listen, I've never felt this free. And now I feel like I, I can actually talk to God. Yeah. So that was one of my promises, you know, that my family's getting saved. I, I had another brother that, that um, he lives in Chicago. And um, at 20 year, years old, they, they diagnosed him with cancer. It hit his kidney. And, yeah. and, and when, it, when cancer hits your kidneys, are really, really bad. It kind of spreads quickly. Um, I'm not a doctor, but basically yeah, yeah, what, what they told me was that um, it's, it's a very little chance for him to live. Um, we began to pray and about a month ago, um, we found out the news that the cancer is completely gone. You know, he's, he's healed. So the promises are coming to pass. But it's funny how it's so easy for us to believe the promises for our family, the promises for our friends, but not the promises for us. And this year, it's been a year for promises for me, for promises for Frank, for promises for you. And um, the reason why I mention all this is because I believe that it's impossible to receive what God has for you unless you confront the things inside of you. You know, unless you confront the problems that you're going through, the issues that you're going through, the doubt that you're going through. In my case, uh, God spoke to me about financial breakthrough. And 
you know, I, I, I'm at church, I hear this word, I yeah. start jumping up and down, I'm very emotional when it comes to like praise and, and, and just worshiping yeah. God. Um, but what about in the moment where the, when the money's not coming through? What mm -hmm. about in the moment when your family has a need and, 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 and you do everything you can and you still don't have the money? And I think those are the moments where you actually have to be vulnerable with God. Yeah. Because again, when you're vulnerable, you're giving authority to somebody to speak to you. And sometimes we're not vulnerable with God. Mm -hmm. So he has no authority to speak into our life. And we're expecting God to do the impossible. But the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And, and the beginning of your breakthrough has to do with you believing. You understand? It's crazy because I actually, like you're saying, Andres knows a lot of my personal life and what was going on with me this year. But there was a moment that I was getting so much bad news back to back yeah. about my dad, things going on in the family, the finances. And it was just getting to the point that I was losing hope. And again, I would, everybody would tell me, Frank, I feel God's going to do something and this is the year and you're going to be blessed. And I specifically remember the day where I got a phone call and like the little bit of hope that I had left just died that day. Mm -hmm. And I later realized that it's true without one of the biggest things that the enemy wants to do is to kill your little bit of hope that you have left Come on. because that will end up affecting your faith. And without faith, you can't really see God move if you don't put your faith into it. But yeah, and it got to the point, it's all going back to how you're saying, I had to I had to go to the point where I had to be real with God and talk to him like a dad. I had to cry like a kid. And I had to just be like, this is what's in my heart. This is what hurts. This is what's unfair. This is why I'm disappointed. And I literally felt how he went in and just kind of had to heal everything but and i, I think it's all that faith and stuff it's crazy what you're saying because you know i've learned that faith comes by hearing you know we hear that so many times the question is who are you hearing you know and if you're not vulnerable with god no. uh, i'll give you an example if i'm not vulnerable with frank it also means that i don't want him to speak into me which means i'm not hearing him so when we're not vulnerable with god it also means that we're not giving him space to speak to us. Therefore, our faith is limited. And most of our promises are stuck, stuck in not having faith. But why? Because you never opened up to him and gave him space to speak to you. However, you don't need vulnerability to hear a lie. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need to open up to anybody to hear your doubts, your fears, your insecurities, or what the devil and even other people are telling you. So my point is that these the promises that God has for you, they're, they're too big for you to depend on your leaders to believe for you. They're too big for you to believe in your parents to believe for you. You need to believe in them, which is why you need to hear from God, which is why you need to open up to God. This is the reason why you have to confront yourself. You have to go to God and say, okay, these are the things I'm struggling with. This is how I feel. You know, some people think that God gets offended by you telling them how you feel. Are you kidding me? God is a good father. What father will get mad at you because you tell him, yo, I believe what you're telling me, but, but I'm, I'm struggling, you know? He's the opposite of that. He's a good yeah. father. He, he's not going to judge you because you don't believe him. On the contrary, the moment you tell him your doubt is the moment where he, he, he has the space to speak into your faith. And I want to encourage you that you, you, in your moments of fear is the moments where you need to ask God for the truth. You know, um, be bold enough. And, and this takes boldness because most people don't want to hear God. Yeah. You, you want to hear what you want to hear. You don't want to hear what he has to say. And in the moments of my weaknesses, I've asked God to speak his truth into me. And those are the moments where he actually reveals to me what's him and what's the devil and what's my flesh. And, and, and those are things that have been helping me out. And I've found myself going forward. Um, the other thing is that you have to be vulnerable with people. Um, you know, the, the, the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. It's God's will for you to be lifted up by somebody next to you. I'll tell you this. In my weaknesses, Frank has always come and lifted me up. And I believe that God has used me in a lot of moments that he's needed it as well. Um, and I've learned that, um, you know, we try to be these Christians where we're perfect. As a leader, actually, let me mm -hmm. speak to the leaders. As a leader, there's this um, fraud mentality that we have to be perfect in front of everybody, yeah. that, that we have to be this perfect image, this perfect leader. And you know what? Um, I think that's garbage. <laughs> yeah, no, I is. think that, that you have to be you. You have to be who you are. Um, definitely, do you have to be strong? Do you have to be bold? Do you have to be courageous? Most definitely. Do you have to um, uh, um, 
you know, do what God called you to do in the middle of your fear? Yes. Yeah. Um, do you have to help people that are completely broken even though you're broken yourself? Yes. Uh, you being broken, does it stop you from helping other people? Not at all. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Peter was completely broken and helping a lot of people in the Bible. You know, Paul was dealing with so much insecurity at the same moment that he was helping a church. So I don't think your weakness disqualifies you. I yeah. think your, your, your availability qualifies you. So, so go ahead. No, I was going to say that I did love what you said about the leaders. And one thing I do want to say is there's been times when I've seen leaders, for example, you're surrounded by people that God has given specific gifts to. I've seen people that have no idea how to do the difference between, for example, leading prayer and then leading worship. Yeah. And even though they have very close friends, I see them hanging out with worshipers, but they don't ask for help. Or for example, I see leaders that are struggling in business, but you have business people around you, but you don't want to ask for advice. Everybody just wants to try to figure things out on their own. Mm. So I think it is important just even with the leaders amongst ourselves to be real with each other. If you need help or if you need advice in something, it's okay to seek and ask for wisdom Definitely. from people around you that, that God has you know, already trained in that area. And it's such an easier way to grow by just simply being honest and saying, hey, I need help in this area. What do you think and whatever, but You definitely. know, I, I always hear this. Um, you can go fast alone or you can go far with a lot of people next to you. Yeah. And it doesn't impress me when somebody goes um, really fast or from one night to the other, they become this great, amazing leader that everybody looks up to. Mm -hmm. What amazes me is when time after time after time, years go by and you're still there because it's really easy to build something. The question is, do you have the maturity and the character to sustain the pressure to, to remain? And, uh, and I think pressure can be handled with maturity. And a lot of people, they grow really quick, but they don't have the maturity to stay there because the pressure destroys them. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes me to my next point, which is, you know, what voices are you listening to? Yeah. And I think it's so important to uh, make the voice, you know, you always attract what you value. If you value the voice of God, I was talking to Apostle recently and I asked him, I'm, I'm like, look, Apostle, what is, like, you're so wise, you have so much wisdom. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you continually grow in it, you know? Yeah. For those of you watching that don't know who we're talking about, yes. we're actually talking about Apostle Guillermo Maldonado. He's, um, he's our Apostle, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, he's been, you know, our spiritual father. Uh, which means he, he basically helps us grow as a Christian. You know, uh, when we came to Christ, we were babies and he mm -hmm. kind of fathered us into being the man that we are today. And as I asked him about wisdom, he, he, he broke it down so simply. He goes, look, you, you attract what you value. And, and wisdom starts with the fear of God. Meaning if you value God, God will give you more of himself in advice, in, in solutions, in his presence. And the, the enemy of wisdom is familiarity with God. And, um, you know, I say all this because some of us, we want to hear answers from God, but we don't value God. How do I know that we don't value God? You make no time for God. You make time to hear from people through, you know, hear God through people, mm -hmm. but you don't uh, open space in your daily life to just hear from God. You pay more attention to your situations than what God has to say about them. You pay more attention to the problems in your life. You meditate more in your problems. As a matter of fact, you're an expert in your problems, yeah. but you're not an expert in the voice of God. And it's proven because you don't either wake up or stay up at night or at least make some time in the day to just sit and, and, and the Bible says Salah, just, just have a time with God and hear his voice. By the way, I just had to restart the video because we just hit half an hour. I told Andres we're not preaching today. We're just having a conversation. <laughs> I tried. I mean, you I think tried. that is a conversation. But he pulls it out been, of me. It's been really good, though. Uh huh. Um, okay, so let, let me close with this because I think I've spoken a lot. Um, in this season, more than ever, I've learned that it's so important to hear what God is saying more than ever. Um, and the only way to hear God is for you to be vulnerable with God. Tell Him what you're really going through. Tell Him what you're really feeling. Tell Him your struggles so that you create space for Him to speak to you truth. Because sometimes we judge ourselves a lot harder than what we're actually doing. Uh, number two, it's, I've also learned that it's so important not to just hear the voice of God, but to hear God through other people. You know, God doesn't want you to be an independent Christian. There's a reason why he said, um, hear the words of the prophet, believe the words of the prophets and prosper. And you will prosper. Why? Because um, you know what I've learned? That if I hear God, I'm very strong on that promise right now. 
But the moment an attack comes, I'm gonna doubt whatever God said. However, if I hear God and then I speak, uh, Frank, I don't know where it comes to me and confirms the word that God spoke to me. Well, guess what? When the attack comes, not only did I hear it from God, but I heard it through somebody that had no idea what I was going through. And what God does through people is that he destroys the possible doubt that will attack you with every promise because every promise also brings a lot of lies. See, I'm not grabbing these words just so that my emotion of fear goes away. I'm grabbing these words and I'm using them in prayer now. Every time I doubt, I'm not gonna go and let my emotions take over me. Instead, I'm gonna read the promises that I'm valuing because that's what valuing promises is. You read them over and over again so that not only doubt goes away, but like the Bible says, faith comes by hearing. So now I'm hearing these promises and I'm constantly walking in them. And let me tell you, man, they're coming to pass. Yeah. So I went through a season a few years back where it was this big hype, God would prophesy, you would see these breakthrough in power and in all these things, but my heart was stuck. And in this season, he's tackling my heart because the Bible says you will only pro you know, prosper as your soul is prospering. So many of us were prospering on the outside mm -hmm. and God now, he wants to deal with your heart so you can really prosper in the dimensions that is not just a $100 or $1,000 breakthrough or one family member getting saved. How about we have so much money that we go to the grocery market and we pay for everybody in line? How about we believe that all of our families get saved? How about we believe that none of us yeah. are going through struggle in our lives? So, you know, I do believe it's a season of, of promises coming to pass, but it all starts with just vulnerability with God. Definitely. And I try not to preach. <laughs> but one thing I do want to say is, like he was saying, if you are like me, who when you go through stuff, you tend to go into your cave and you try to escape from the world and from people, don't. Just because you never know if God wants to use someone around you to bless you or if God wants to use you as a blessing from someone else because there's people out there that need to hear from you, they need something that you have, they even might just need a hug um, from you just to be with you. And, uh, and if there's anything that we said today, if there's anything that you can relate to, or if you are going through something, your family's going through something, things like what um, Andres was saying and the testimonies that he was saying with his family, or things that I was speaking about when I was low and how God completely changed everything in a moment. If, if you could relate to any of those things, take it. Yeah. and apply it apply it to your own life and believe it and just know if god did it with us um why can't he do it with you if you're also a son or daughter of god and i want to thank you guys for watching the video if you want to share it go ahead and share it um with a friend with a relative with anybody that you think needs to hear this let us know what you think in the comments below i love to hear stories Definitely. from you guys i love to hear what you guys think if there's a topic that you want us to talk about in the future or if you want to ask andres something ask in the comments definitely and, we'll love um, to answer all of them definitely we can do something like that in the future and just remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next week next time. <laughs> thank Take you so care. much bye